Today I want to talk about Bulwark, but in a bit of a different format than usual. I've played multiple characters with this class recently, with different races and talent builds, so I'll take you on that journey and show you what I've learned. Bulwark is one of the starter classes in the base game, and it's one that new players are likely to gravitate to, as it's a recognizable archetype, a warrior using a one-handed weapon plus shield, at a time where you are overwhelmed with information. And while Bulwark is easier to understand and play than most of the other classes in Tome, it is also in the category of classes that punish your mistakes the hardest, because it's a melee class that has zero talents to help escape combat. This is less of a problem on normal and nightmare difficulty, where it's much more rare to run into enemies that you can't defeat, but on Insane you have to be extremely careful about the fights you take. In my class tier list, I called Bulwark a glass cannon, and unfortunately that is just completely incorrect and shows how much I used to underestimate block. You get access to this talent by simply equipping a shield, and it will block a flat amount from every incoming non-mind damage instance. The problem is, while this lasts two turns, if you actually block any damage, it will turn itself off at the beginning of your next turn. So what it really does is that you spend a turn to not take damage for a turn, but then you are completely vulnerable again. This is why I think it's a must for any block class to take the Eternal Guard Prodigy on level 25. It simply makes the block buff always last the full two turns, and this simple change turns the block from something fairly underwhelming into one of the best defensive tools in the entire game. The other part of block is Counter-Strike, which is a debuff that you apply when you block, and it massively reduces the enemy's defense, while also doubling the damage of your next few melee attacks. For these reasons, I really like DREM on block classes, since with its frenzy, you can keep block up for like 8 turns in a row. Bulwark specifically has access to the shield wall sustain that massively increases your block value and reduces the cooldown of the block talent, making it even more powerful. Unfortunately, the journey to that first prodigy was painful. Bulwark really struggles with managing stamina, especially early game, and with Drem letting me use my talents twice, I would run out of stamina in the first few turns of combat and constantly have to rest with my pitiful regeneration rate. Then after being forced into the old forest, because Mace and Sandworm Lair had an unbeatably unique camping the entrance, I ran into a Summoner Solipsist. I knew taking this fight would be super dangerous and I probably shouldn't do it, but I had a feeling I could just barely kill it and obviously, when there's an escort, it's always a lot easier to convince yourself. The good news was that I was right. I did kill it, but the bad news was that it was just barely and the summons managed to avenge their master. So then I did the exact same thing, surprisingly ran into the exact same problems and died in a similar manner. At this point, I was really bored with this class. It felt like Bulwark lacks the creativity and the fantasy that most of the other classes in Tome have. But I really wanted to make a video about one of the starter classes, so I decided to spice it up with some undead. These two races can only use runes as their inscriptions, so as a movement infusion addict I usually stay away from them, but Skeleton seemed like a great fit for Bulwark. You get to increase your two primary stats, and get a massive shield so that you can stand your ground instead of running away. And I have to admit, Skeleton does feel pretty good. Being immune to bleed and poison makes fighting rogues so much more manageable, and you are very hard to kill. I also found that Bulwark is a lot more enjoyable once you get to level 25 and get Eternal Guard, and also explore some of its locked categories. Step Up is a fun passive that can eventually always give you a 1000% movement speed bonus for a turn on kill. That is a late game movement infusion, but I'm like 90% sure there's something off about this talent. As far as I understand, you don't get the movement bonus for a turn, you get it until the end of your 
current turn. This means the duration of step up is inconsistent. Sometimes it's like if you used a movement infusion, but sometimes you can only take a few steps. And the only other mention of people experiencing this is this random form threat from 2013. So maybe I'm just delusional, but I think this is how it works. Anyways, it's still a great talent, but because of this, I found it more useful for short movement between enemies rather than relying on it to run away. And let's not get into how exactly turns work in Tome. I'll link a reddit thread in the description where you can read about it, but honestly, it's not really helpful information anyways. All you need to know is that higher speed makes you act more often, which is just always good. Unfortunately, my skeleton adventure got cut short when I made the very dubious decision to only have 18% mind resistance in the east. Honestly, with how low my resistances were across the board, I was asking for it. I hoped I would survive until the crafting device, but instead I took over a thousand mind damage and died. And then I tried Ghoul and confirmed that I never want to play it again, as it constantly feels like you're fighting uphill, trying to mitigate the 20% speed debuff. And then finally, I ended up on what I am confident is the best way to play Bulwark, going anti-magic. I picked Krog for this, because they let you reach a 100% stun immunity without any gear through shield wall and drake infused blood, and they are just generally a solid race. But I think Dwarf should also be really good, and then you would stack saves, which have a lot of support in Bulwark, or you could still go Drem to keep your block up for longer. The big difference here is that you don't go Dexterity as your second stat, since it doesn't actually scale many important talents, and you instead go Willpower. This not only makes all of your anti-magic talents actually good, but it gives you 2.5 stamina per point of willpower. This might not seem like much, but it makes a very noticeable difference in how long you can stay in combat, and it makes it a lot more enjoyable to play. You'll also be able to take advantage of some of the anti-magic item modifiers that give all resistance, which you will need since you are likely to wear heavy armor. I took flexible combat as my second prodigy, and alongside greater weapon focus and counter strikes from your blocks, Bulwark scales to become an absolute beast in the late game. You are very hard to bring down and dishing out pretty crazy damage, unless the target is another Bulwark with 200 plus armor, at which point it becomes a long, drawn out 10 minute endurance battle. For those fights, it is useful to keep some sort of high armor penetration weapon like this unique axe I found. I also recommend picking up the Warcry's category on level 34, which should solve any remaining stamina problems you have. It gives you access to second wind, which just instant speed gives you stamina, and battle shout for a really good pre-buff before combat. I even had a nightmare scenario happen, where I managed to aggro Rekshor and like 20 other enemies on the last tiny floor in the Orc Prides, and I barely managed to fight my way out of that hellscape, which I was really surprised about, that none of those debuffs stopped me from leaving, but obviously I would have to go back and kill Rakshor. So after getting to 50 and finalizing my gear, I came back, uh, still pretty terrified, but block really shined here. Through 50 overlapping ghoul vomits and 10 other random AoEs, I managed to get close to Rakshor, burst him in a couple of turns and then wipe everyone else without really losing any health at all. Block is unique in that even against an infinite amount of enemies, you can be invincible if they can't get above your block value and most of the enemies can't, even rares or uniques. I ended up with only 4 inscriptions, because I also took fungus. Movement, wild wild is a no brainer for mobility and debuff removal, and I planned on using a regeneration infusion, but I found healing to just be better, since you take 0 damage the majority of the time, and poisons are just so annoying to deal with. I also just did not find a single good regeneration infusion with a low cooldown. And so, 
without much trouble, I got to the final boss. And uh, it was a tragedy. The first red flag was that I did not find Spellhunt Remnants. This is sort of the replacement for Dissipation Rune if you go anti-magic, but unlike the Dissipation Rune that you can get in every single run, Spellhunt Remnants are a random drop. So if you get unlucky, uh, there's not much you can do. It is possible to just grind vaults in the Orc Prides, but grinding like that in Tome, once your character is fully leveled up, is just really, really boring to me. So all I had for sustain removal was Mana Clash. I was experimenting with the Guardian's Totem to silence them instead of a Psionic Shield, and I don't recommend doing that. It didn't feel like it did all that much, but it was looking pretty good. I had a great spot to hit Elandar, he was sort of dying, although slowly, and then this happened. That was Elandar's Time Prison. I know this happened to me before, but it had to be on one of the S tier classes, because I remember just going, okay, cool, and then just killing them both. But on Bulwark, at least my Bulwark, with my gear, with all my offensive cooldowns blown, Elandar fully stabilized, with all his shields back up, Aerin dead, and every enemy ready to focus on me, I knew this was game over. My only hope was to somehow split Elandar and Argoniel by kiting them around the pillars, but unfortunately they stuck to me pretty well, and at this point, even if I had 50,000 life, I would just die to the debuffs. But then, the blood of life surged through my veins, reinvigorating my body, and with my newfound power, oh no, wait, no, all my talents, including my sustains, are still on cooldown, so as it's more often than not the case with the blood of life, it was just a way to get my embarrassing death message into chat twice. But painful deaths are an unavoidable part of Tome, and they happen to everyone. I think the biggest lesson here is that not having Spellhunt Remnants or Dissipation Rune for this fight just feels so so bad. Now I'll show you how I leveled this character, and keep in mind that I'll have to cheat my stats at a certain point to show you how you should ideally level your talents. What you do in the actual game is that you save gear that gives you a certain stat, like Constitution, then you put it on, you take the talent that requires constitution, and then you can put on your normal gear, get below the constitution threshold, but that talent will still continue working. It works the exact same for prodigies. There's a few talents that I want to expand upon. I want to warn against shield expertise. This vaguely says that it improves damage with all of your shield talents, but it's by just a few percentages. One point in this is about half as good as the fifth point in those talents. So unless you care about the saves, only put points into this at the very end. Also, I did not put any points into Last Stand. I think the below 1 HP text will usually be irrelevant, unless you are doing some heroism infusion alchemy. And extra life is nice, especially since it's instant speed, but you'll have to move at some point. In fact, you want to move, since you will get that big burst of movement speed after you get a kill, and very often, even if it's just moving one or two tiles, it's a benefit to do so. Apparently, you can combo last stand with Battle Shout to get more life, so I guess there's some use for it there, but I didn't find any leftover points for this. All my character sheets will be linked in the description, if you want some inspiration, or if you have any questions. And I'll keep making the longer, more in-depth dives on the other classes that I am more excited to talk about than Bulwark, but at least this way it's more digestible, although perhaps not the best at explaining everything if you are new to the game. But if that's the case, I would point you towards my skirmisher video, which I believe to be the best class for beginners, because it is so, so much more forgiving of mistakes than Bulwark, and you don't have to worry if you don't have it unlocked, because I show you how to do that in the video. Next time, 
I think I will be talking about a Tinker class for the first time, so I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for watching.